everybody, Ms. Roberts here for day five of Polar Bear's Past Bedtime. And I'm trying to remember, I think this was the fourth scroll for Annie and Jack, so I'm kind of excited to see what happens next. Chapter nine. Oh no, one more. Well, I guess it wasn't the last scroll now that I read that. Sorry, I keep looking at my reflection and there's this little hair that's out of, oh, now it's really out of place. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, oh no, one more. By the time the dog sled arrived at the treehouse, the snowstorm had become a blizzard. Can you wait just a minute, Jack asked, the seal hunter, so we can check something? The hunter nodded. His dogs whined as Jack and Annie climbed through the treehouse window. Jack grabbed the scroll that held the riddle and he unrolled it. The riddle was gone. In its place was just one shimmering word, mask. We did it, said Annie. The treehouse will take us home now. Great, said Jack. Let's say goodbye to the seal hunter and give him back his clothes. They quickly pulled off their seal skin clothing and their boots. Thanks for letting us borrow these, Jack called through the window. The seal hunter walked to the treehouse and took the clothes from Jack and Annie. They stood shivering in their pajamas and bare feet. The, 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 the thanks for everything, said Annie, her teeth chattering. The seal hunter gave them a wave. Then he walked through the swirling snow to his sled. Mush, he shouted. The dogs took off through the stormy night. Let's get out of here, said Jack. He hugged himself before we freeze to death. Annie grabbed the Pennsylvania book. She always took that always took them home. She pointed to the picture of Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, she said. They waited from the tree we, they waited for the treehouse to start spinning. Nothing happened. Jack shivered. I wish we could go there, Annie said again. Again, nothing happened. What's going on? said Jack. He looked around the treehouse. The four scrolls with the solved riddle answers were in the corner. Then he saw it. A fifth scroll. Where did the, the, that come from? he said. Jack grabbed it and unrolled it. On there were the words. Look at the letters. The first, not the rest. Discover the place that you love the best. Oh no, said Annie. Another riddle. Okay, okay. Let's stay calm, Jack said, shivering. Look at the letters, the first, not the rest. Okay, the first letter in this riddle, the first letters in this riddle are L-A-T-L-T. -T. That doesn't make any sense, Annie broke in. Icy winds battered the treehouse. Snow blew inside. We have to hurry, said Annie. Jack was freezing. He looked around wildly. Letters, letters, what letters, he said. His gaze rested on the scrolls in the corner. M -m Maybe we should look at the letters of the answers, he said. Right, said Annie. They began unrolling scrolls. The scroll from the adventure under the ocean said oyster. The scroll from the wild west said echo. The scroll from the journey to Africa said honey. And the scroll from the Arctic said mask. Oyster, echo, honey, mask, said Jack. The letters, their first letters are O-E-H-M. That doesn't make any sense either, said Annie. Yeah, but maybe we have to unscramble those letters, said Jack. O-E-H-M. They spell hemo. Or miho, said Annie. Or home, said Jack. Home, said Annie. That's the place we love best. Jack unscrolled the fifth scroll. The riddle had gone. In its place was one shimmering word. Home. Yay, cried Annie. She grabbed the Pennsylvania book. I wish we could go home, 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 home. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster and faster, then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter 10, Master Librarians. Warm air washed over Jack. It felt wonderful. 
You have succeeded in your quest, said a soft, soothing voice. Are you glad to be home? Jack opened his eyes. Morgan Le Fay stood in the moonlight. Yes, he said. We solved all the riddles, said Annie. Indeed, said Morgan. You have proven that you can find answers in very hard questions. She reached into the folds of her robe and took out two thin pieces of wood. A magic library card for each of you, she said. She gave one to Annie and one to Jack. Oh, man, said Jack, feeling the card. The wooden card was one was as thin and smooth as an ordinary library card. On its surface shimmered the letters M and L. They, these are your master librarian cards, said Morgan. You are the newest, mas newest members of the ancient society of master librarians. What do we do with them, said, asked Jack. Take them on your future journey, said Morgan. Only a very wise person or another master librarian will be able to see the letters. These will be the people who can help you. Wow, said Annie. Can we go to a, on a mission right now? Now you must go home and rest, said Morgan. I will come back for you soon. Jack and Annie put their secret cards in their pockets. Then Jack took out the Arctic book and put it with the other books. Goodbye, he said. See you soon, Annie said to Morgan. Morgan gave them a little wave. Jack and Annie climbed down the rope ladder. As soon as they stepped into the dark ground, onto the dark ground, they heard a roar. They looked up. They saw a blur of wind and a high and a light high in the oak tree. Then all was silent. Morgan and her magic treehouse were gone. Jack reached for his magic library card. Then he felt it tingling warmth. It's tingle. Blah, 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 blah. Sorry. When he felt its tingling warmth, he knew that amazing adventures lay ahead. Let's go, he said. He turned on the flash turned on his flashlight. The woods don't feel scary like they did before, said Annie, as they walked through the trees. I'm not afraid anymore either. I'm not afraid anymore. Me either, said Jack. Hey, the darkness is like a mask, said Annie. Yes, yeah, said Jack. It hides the day, but it brings out our courage. They came out of the woods. Jack saw their house in the distance. It looked warm and cozy. The porch light glowed. The moon shone overhead. Home, he whispered. Home, said Annie. They started running. Jack took off after her, running to the place that they both loved best. The end of Polar Bears Past Noon. Oh, sorry, not Past Noon. That was, that was, what was it now? I think it was Lions Past Noon. Or no, it was Lions Past Lunchtime. It was... Hmm, my memory isn't working. I'm trying to go to the page where I had the books that we just read. Okay, so, um, no, no, it was, it was Lions at Lunchtime. Was it Ghost Town Past Noon? Hmm, I can't remember. I'll have to look into it and I'll tell you next week. So today we are, not today, Monday, we are going to read book 13, Vol Vacation Under the Volcano. Ooh, gotta say, this one feels thicker than our books usually do. I want to double check that we don't have more chapters. I might have to rearrange how many I read in a day. Nope, still 10. Who wants to vacation next to a volcano? Jack and Annie are about to find out when the magic treehouse whisks them back to the days of the Roman Empire. They arrive in Pompeii and soon discover that it is the very day the city will be destroyed. Now Jack and Annie must race against time to find the, an ancient library before it's buried in ash. And we'll be excited to read that in book 13 next week. So I will see you Monday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye.